From KUNC and the NPR Network, this is In the NoCo. I'm Erin O'Toole. Visit any farmer's market in Colorado, and you will see long lines of people waiting to buy produce that's grown here in the state. And when fall arrives, it is all about Colorado chilies. Just ask this woman I talked with at a farmer's market a while back. We love the season, just watching the the chilies being roasted. We make green chili the first snowfall of every year. But the popularity of those Colorado-grown chilies is a relatively recent development. Although farmers in Pueblo have been growing different kinds of peppers for decades, Colorado didn't really have its own signature variety of chili pepper until the early 2000s, when a CSU agriculture professor named Mike Bartolo created the Pueblo chili. And in a few short years, they've become a regional rival to New Mexico's more famous Hatch green chilies. Now, as someone who loves the smell of roasting peppers in the autumn air, I was curious to know how Mike Bartolo developed the Pueblo chili and why he thinks green chili is such a source of pride for so many people. Yeah, it always kind of befuddles me why everybody has such a passion for chili, but I think it's because it's so integral to our culture. It's a food that not only provides us with calories, but is so instrumental to a lot of the good memories we have with food and family and is really weaved through our culture in many ways and through many generations. Do you think that chili peppers get an outside amount of attention? I I do. I'm kind of (laughs) an analytical guy, and I look at the numbers, and certainly by uh, Colorado agricultural comparisons, you know, it's very modest in terms of acreage compared to things like wheat or even other vegetables like potatoes, but they get an inordinate amount of attention. It's kind of like the Kim Kardashian of crops. It gets a lot more attention based on its relative (laughs) amount of impact it has on society. So I kind of feel bad for crops like beans and wheat, corn and livestock. Mike didn't set out to create a new variety of chili. It happened by chance. Around 30 years ago, Mike's main focus was researching things like water, nutrition, and pest management in agriculture. But one day, his father brought him an unusual gift, a bag of chili seeds. It had belonged to his uncle, a man named Harry Mosco. He had passed away a couple years earlier, and while they were cleaning out his garage, they had a leftover bag of chili seed that was the original, what I call the heirloom mirasol, mirasol meaning looking for the sun in Spanish, chili seeds. So this was a variety of chili that had been grown in the Pueblo area for decades and had been carefully selected by farmers in that area over you know many, many generations. And he had a bag of that, and it just so happened I had room in my test plots that, that year to grow some extra chili plants. So I grew four extra rows of this chili. And in that population of that original Mirasol chili was one individual pepper plant that looked unique. And that's really where it started. But I saw this one that was a little bit bigger in size, had a little bit different uh, texture to the pod, thicker. And so I began saving the seed from that one individual chili pod. And that took about another seven or eight years before I eventually came up with enough seed uh, to release the Moscow variety. And then I just began giving out samples to farmers. I had grown up with a lot of these farmers, related to many of them. And I just gave them samples and tell me what you think. And they gave me an honest opinion. And it just kind of took off from there. I'm curious what makes a Pueblo chili um, different from other chili peppers. How does it look different or taste different? Well, you know, everybody will have a certain idea of what the perfect prototypical chili pepper is. And if you're from New Mexico, you might say it's this. From And the chili pepper here in Colorado, I think, is a little bit technically a little bit thicker meated. So it has a okay. much uh, heavier body to it. And that holds up very well to the roasting process, which is mainly how it's, it's prepared for different uh, culinary dishes. I think it's got some different flavor overtones. It's got kind of a fruity aftertaste to it. It's just a little bit different, and it's it's typically a little more pungent or a little bit higher in heat content uh-huh. than your typical New Mexico Anaheim chili. I guess the test is in the, the, if people are going to be able to use it and incorporate it into the, the, the dishes that they truly love. You know, New Mexico makes a very big deal out of its hatch green chilies. So I have to ask, how do you feel about the rivalry with hatch chilies from New Mexico? Well, I, I personally have... <laughs> 
very good friends in New Mexico, a lot of good acquaintances that are farmers and other researchers. And so, you know, to me, it, it's good for everybody. Anytime you can get more notoriety for a particular crop, everybody wins out on it. So uh, the more attention that's given to chili growers, whether it be in New Mexico or Colorado, great. You mentioned cultivation. What are the ideal growing conditions? Um, and I'm, I'm asking for myself. Could I mm -hmm. grow Pueblo chilies in my own garden? Sure. Anybody can grow Pueblo chilies. Eh? And Colorado is a great place. You know, we have some some challenges with weather as far as, you know, storms are concerned. But right. we've got some great, uh, at least in the Pueblo area and many other irrigated valleys that we've got good irrigation water. We've got great, wonderful, productive soils. And then our climatic conditions, I think, are fairly unique. We've got a fairly high elevation, so we get high incidence of solar radiation, good sun. And then we have what I think are some of the best diurnal variations in temperature, which means we get warm days and cool nights. And I think that brings on some unique flavor compounds that really gives the, uh, the Pueblo chili and the Colorado chili a distinctive taste. It's the same thing that leads to some of the great flavors in Palisade peaches, Olathe sweet corn, and Rocky mm. Ford melons that helps accumulate certain compounds like sugars and other things into the, into the developing fruit. And uh, chili is no different. Now, Mike likes eating his chilies, but he stressed that he is not an expert on preparing them. So he relies on some friends at his church community in Rocky Ford to act as his test kitchen. And I also rely on some chefs, too. They're a very important part of this process, too, because they're seeing things that I can't even begin to see. What does it mean to you to have created this unique variety of chili pepper, and one that has certainly inspired a lot of passion and a lot of loyalty. Well, I, I never do think of myself as the, the creator, so to speak, of Pueblo Chili, because the story of Pueblo Chili is really built by many hands. Peppers have been cultivated in this hemisphere for thousands of years by indigenous peoples, and they began to find these plants in the wild and do their own selection process. So it's through generations and eons of time it's the farmers who, who came well before I did, my relatives, my grandparents and parents that cultivated this and, and all the other farmers whose multi-generations contributed to that story. And then it's the other end of the story, too, where people that have taken the time to prepare the food and have done thousands of meals for their families over the generation. Mm -hmm. So everybody has contributed a brick into this so-called story of mm. the Pueblo Chile. And I don't see myself as any more important or any different than anybody else. You know, I'll, I'll be gone. You know, I'm, I'm in my 60s and one of these days I'm going to be gone and the story will go on because it's such an integral part of our culture. And I'm hoping other people will continue that legacy that was really handed off to me and to others uh, for a sh relatively short period of time. <music> Dr. Mike Bartolo is a retired vegetable crop specialist with Colorado State University Extension. You can read more about his work on the Pueblo Chili, maybe before you head out to the nearest farmer's market to grab a few bags for yourself. We'll have some links in our show notes and at KUNC.org. That's it for us today. I'm Erin O'Toole. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great weekend.